So now let's talk about the graphs of square root functions. Here we're given y is equal to the square root of x. Now to graph this, we would graph this just like any other function. We're going to create a table of values. We're going to pick several x values, plug them in, and solve them for y. Now remember, the domain of y is equal to the square root of x is that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. So the values that I pick for x in my table will be greater than or equal to 0. So first I make my table, and I need to select some x values. I'm going to pick ones that are easy to take the square root of. I'm going to pick 0, 1, 4, and 9. Now I'm going to plug each one of these in and solve for y. If I plug in 0 for x, I get y is equal to the square root of 0. Now the square root of 0 is just 0, so we have y is equal to 0. If I plug in 1 for x, I get y is equal to the square root of 1. Square root of 1 is just 1, so we get y is equal to 1. Next I plug in 4 for x, I get y is equal to the square root of 4. Square root of 4, 4 is a perfect square of 2, so we have y is equal to 2. And lastly, I'm going to pick 9. So we have y is equal to the square root of 9. 9 is a perfect square of 3. So we have y is equal to 3. So I'm going to plot these points. 0, 0 is right here. 1, 1 is right there. 4 and 2 is right here. And 9 and 3. Now I'm going to connect these with a smooth curve, and the graph of the square root of x looks something like this. Now the graph of y is equal to the square root of x is just like the graph of y is equal to x squared. y is equal to x squared is a parabola, and you may notice that the graph of y is equal to the square root of x looks kind of like half of a parabola. The graph of y is equal to the square root of x is only half of the parabola, though, because my domain is restricted. Now let's compare the graph of y is equal to the square root of x to the graphs of y is equal to the square root of x minus 4 and y is equal to the square root of x minus 4. We'll do y is equal to the square root of x minus 4 first. We're going to need our table. The first value that I'm going to pick is going to be 0 for x. If I plug that in, I'll get y is equal to the square root of 0 minus 4. The square root of 0 minus 4, well, 0 minus 4 is the square root of negative 4. But I can't take the square root of a negative number. So I don't have a y value for 0. If we look at this, the domain of this function is that x minus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0 because I can't take the square root of a negative number which means x has to be greater than or equal to 4. So the values that I have to pick for x to be able to graph this function have to be greater than or equal to 4. Well I'm going to pick 4, 5, and 8 because I know they'll be easy to solve. If I plug in 4 for x I'll get y is equal to the square root of 4 minus 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So we get y is equal to the square root of 0, or y is equal to 0. So when x is 4, our y is 0. If I plug in 5, I'll have y is equal to the square root of 5 minus 4. That's y is equal to the square root of 1, or just 1. And if I plug in 8, I'll have y is equal to the square root of 8 minus 4. 8 minus 4 is 4, and the square root of 4 is just 2. So let's plot these new points. 4, 0 is right there. 5, 1 is right there. And 8, 2 is right about here. We connect those with our smooth curve. And our graph looks something like that. Now let's look at this function y is equal to the square root of x minus 4. 
In this function, the only thing underneath our square root is x. So it's going to have the same domain as y is equal to the square root of x. Or x is going to have to be greater than or equal to 0. Now if I'm going to graph this, I'm going to need several x values. So first I draw my chart. And the x values that I'm going to select all have to be greater than or equal to 0. So I'm going to pick 0, 1, 4, and 9. Because those will be easy to take the square root of. First I plug in 0 for x. I get y is equal to the square root of 0 minus 4. Square root of 0 is 0 and minus 4 is negative 4. Next I plug in 1 of y is equal to the square root of 1 minus 4. Square root of 1 is just 1. And subtract 4 and you get negative 3. Next I plug in 4 for x. You get square root of 4 minus 4. The square root of 4 is 2. Subtract 4 and you get negative 2. Then lastly I'm going to plug in 9 of y is equal to the square root of 9 minus 4. The square root of 9 is 3, so 3 minus 4 we get y is equal to negative 1. Now if I plot these, 0, negative 4 is there, 1, negative 3 is here, 4, negative 2 is right there, and 9, negative 1 is right here. Connect these with a smooth curve. And the graph of y is equal to the square root of x minus 4 looks something like that. What's important to notice here is that when our minus 4 was underneath the square root sign, that turned into a horizontal translation. The minus 4 brought us the same graph, just four spaces to the right on our axis. When the 4 was on the outside, that gave us a vertical translation of four spaces down. So adding and subtracting a constant value underneath the square root sign will cause you to have a horizontal translation. And adding or subtracting a constant value outside of the square root sign will cause your graph to have a vertical translation. So now let's try graphing something a little bit harder. Here we have y is equal to the square root of 5x plus 4 and then all of that is minus 3. Well first off let's look at the domain of this. Everything underneath the square root cannot be negative. So that means 5x plus 4 has to be greater than or equal to 0. If I subtract 4 from both sides, I get 5x needs to be greater than or equal to negative 4. Divide both sides by 5, and I get x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4 fifths. So any x values that I choose, and I'm going to plot, all have to be greater than negative 4 fifths. So first I make my table, and if my values have to be greater than or equal to negative 4 fifths, then I'm just going to start with negative 4 fifths. I'm also going to pick 0, 1, and 9. If I plug all these x values in, I can solve for y. First I'll plug in negative 4 fifths. I get y is equal to the square root of 5 times negative 4 fifths plus 4, and then minus 3. 5 times negative 4 fifths is just negative 4. So we have y is equal to the square root of negative 4 plus 4, and then all minus 3. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0, so we're taking the square root of 0. So our y is just negative 3. Next I'm going to plug in 0 for x. If I do that, I'll have y is equal to the square root of 5 times 0 plus 4, and then all of that minus 3. 5 times 0 is 0, so this is y is equal to the square root of 4, and then minus 3. Square root of 4 is 2, subtract 3, and you get negative 1. 
So when we plug in 0, we get y is equal to negative 1. Next, I'm going to plug in 1 for x. If I do that, I'll have y is equal to the square root of 5 times 1 plus 4 and then minus 3. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 4 is 9, so we have the square root of 9 and then minus 3. Square root of 9 is 3, subtract 3 and you get 0. So our y is 0 when x is 1. Lastly, I'm going to plug in 9 for x. Your y is equal to the square root of 5 times 9 plus 4 and then minus 3. Now 5 times 9 is 45. Add 4 to that. We end up with the square root of 49 and then minus 3. The square root of 49 is 7. So 7 minus 3 is equal to 4. So we've got several points here and let's plot them. A negative 4 fifths is a little bit less than 1. And then our y is negative 3, so we'd be right about here. 0, negative 1 is right there. 1, 0 would be right there. And then 9 and 4 are right there. Connect these with a smooth curve. And this will be the graph of y is equal to the square root of 5x plus 4 and then minus 3. It's important to notice that our graph ends here because this is the limit of our domain. And that completes the tutorial on square root functions.